Hello, 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 and welcome everyone to the War Thunder official channel. My name is Michael Boom, and I'm joined here by the lovely Tom, aka Oxy. Hello, Tom. How hello. are you doing tonight? I'm doing just fine. How are you? I'm doing just fine as well because we have something special today. Welcome everyone to the official preview of the upcoming patch in War Thunder Red Skies. Interesting name. I like that one actually. Yeah, pretty sweet. It's easier to say than Xva Strike. It is, which, which I've never pronounced. Time. Yeah, I don't <laughs> think I've ever actually learned how to pronounce it properly. I don't think so either. No, terrible. Nightmare. <laughs> Anyway, welcome to the stream. Today we're going to be taking a look at some of the vehicles, features, uh, maps, and all the good stuff that are coming in the next update, coming soon to War Thunder. A couple of um, PSAs, I suppose. What you're going to be seeing in the stream is one, work in progress. So all the stats you see, all the models you see, camos, ammunition is not final. Things might still change until the dev server and until the patch itself. So keep an eye out on that. And um, I actually forgot what the second part was. Uh, oh yeah, the order. We are going to structure it in a way that you guys can um, better follow along. Instead of showing like all the vehicles of each nation at once, we are going to first show all of the tanks. Because we know there are quite a few uh, tanks who are going to be very interested in some of the vehicles that have been uh, shown in the Russian death stream a few hours ago. We are then going to switch over to aircraft. And then at the end we're going to switch over to naval and interject with some of the uh, new maps as well. So, how about we start with the first one? How about we start? Let's go. Now, America doesn't get any tanks, at least not yet. Keep in mind, there might still be some more uh, vehicles in the works that we don't have quite ready to show during the stream. But let's start with the Germans. The Germans finally getting one of the vehicles that have been asking for for a long time. The Marder 1. This is currently a 7.0 um, battle rating tank. This is not final, keep this in mind. What this essentially is, is an IFV which has the um, same cannon as you can find on the uh, Kampfpanzer 70 as the top um, cannon. That's 2K which, as well. Yeah, this is actually, yeah, Leopard 2K as well, which is quite powerful. It, it doesn't penetrate the most amount of armor, keep in mind it's still a 20mm auto cannon, but it is quite powerful in taking out tracks and mm. um, enemy can barrels as well. Yeah, it's actually deceptively good against aircraft, I found. Like, it's usually one as or two well, yes. brings them down, yeah. Although I believe this one doesn't quite have the full elevation. I mean, 65 degrees is still very good, it's but it can't yeah. point quite straight up. Not too bad. But uh, what you lack in anti-armor capabilities with the main gun, you can compensate with the Milan 8 gem. You sadly only get four of them. I'm also going to interject here and go into Reddit mode, so you guys can see some of the stats. You can see the big old work in progress at the top, indicating that this is not final. And for the main gun, we have DM43 APRT, 57mm penetration. You won't really go through the front of most tanks, but through the sides you can actually do some decent work. I've yeah. killed quite a few, at least in the test drives, from the side with the autocannon, of course. The RH202 has a, a very high fire rate. You also have the Milan 8 GM. This is not the best, not the worst. It's got a decent speed. Yeah. It is mouse aimed, which is good. 530 mm millimeters of penetration. Firing range is a bit limited, and you are going to have some issues against um, ERA, especially Russian ERA. This is not a tandem, war, tandem heat warhead, so ERA is going to defeat this thing. But still, it's a nice, uh, nice option for what is actually a pretty low rank in yeah, comparison to vehicle. Pretty much, yeah. Like, the Milan's pretty good. Same one as on the, the Warrior, the first uh, ATGM it gets. So it's yeah, pretty decent. I've had a decent experience with it in the past. It's not, like, the best one. But I don't know. I, I find it's more reliable than the Toe, like, for me, at least. Um, yeah, it's going to be pretty interesting to see how this thing works. I mean, I don't know. This The main gun for me is always just brilliant against helis and stuff. Do you know what I mean? Can, can like, we ask to just talk us, uh, about this thing over here? I know. What? what? What is that? What, Germany, why? Germany, explain. I don't know. <laughs> it's a bit strange. This is supposed me. to be a machine gun at the rear in its own like separate turret, but it looks a bit weird, doesn't it? It does, yeah. I'm not quite sure. I mean, I guess it's like more f uh, for infantry rather than That is the else, thing. But... It does make sense. This is an IFE. This is supposed to be for infantry support. As yeah. you can see, it basically has no armor. You're not really going to defeat anything with this. But interesting, which you might have noticed from the X-ray here. Do you notice how the crew is very low? here in the turret, and how the gun is way above, as well as the AT gem. I have a feeling you can probably, especially now with the new commander sights, which we were going to show off in a, in a second as well, uh, which this one might not get, but still, at least the regular gun sights should have it. You can probably hide behind a hill pretty effectively and only dispose the gun. Yeah, good point, yeah. Thing, of course, is you're going to have the AT gem here and the ammo belt, so you can still get ammo racked, but mm. I have a feeling this is going to be quite a sneaky one. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, this should be quite a sneaky one. Okay, moving on to the next one. A new Tanque Argentino Medi Median, I think it is. I think so. 
Yes. Very good. Tanque Argentino Mediano. This is the TAM. This time a premium version, the Tank, the TAM 2 IP. This is an improvement on uh, the early TAM that we have with a bit of added protection against uh, chemical shells. You might notice that it's a bit more chunky and has a nice size skirts. Mm -hmm. And a very interesting looking turret as well, I have to say. This is a. It looks very kind of like mini Leopard 2A6, I have to say. It looks a bit like the Nexus, but squashed. Yes, actually, it's a very good point, yeah. <laughs> it's quite sweet, I like it. You have a look there as well. Can you yeah. show us some of the armor values that we have? Yeah, we have a look. Um, so, yeah, we've got all the extra plates here. Uh, base armor, I'm pretty sure, is pretty much the same as the um, the regular TAM. Um, yeah, it's sort of improved superficially, I guess, uh, from some heat projectiles. It's always going to be a bit better. Uh, but generally speaking, I mean, it's not going to survive any of the more standard rounds you're going to be seeing at the tier. I mean, yeah, overall, especially now with the overpressure damages as well, it's going yeah. to find its way through nooks and crannies. You might survive some heat shells and maybe some SBAA, but uh, not much more than that. Yeah. I'm going to show you the internal layout, which is pretty much still the same. It of course have a massive ammo key in the back of the turret, which is going to be a little bit of an issue, I have to say. But we'll see how that goes. And because I know that Reddit wants to see it, let's take a look at the stats. Whoa! All the modification, you have a laser range finder, you have DM33, you have all that good stuff. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's pretty much just a tumble with premium bonuses and a bit of extra chunk armor. And interesting base cam as well. I it's like the really base cam nice, yeah. I'm very simple in that way, so I do like the camos. There you go, bit of stats. Yeah. I mean, it's it's the, the modifications are going to be very similar. This is just a slight upgrade over towards what we have. Okay, let's move on to the next vehicle that we have. Tom is going to show off. Yes. Oh, that's an interesting little addition over there. It is. I had no idea this existed. I'd wager most people probably had no idea this existed. It's quite a bizarre thing. But uh, yeah, this is the Concept 3. No, it doesn't even have a name. It's just like Idea 3. But so what, what happened to Concept 1 and 2? You don't want to know that. That's for, Ominous. That's for later. But yes, uh, <laughs> this thing, pretty nice. Uh, I really like the kind of, I don't know, it's obviously like um, a more modern vehicle as well, because even at 4.3 currently, this thing has a laser rangefinder. And we can sort of show a new feature of this uh, in the test drive in a second. But so this thing is effectively equipped with the, uh, it's like the shorter 17 pounder uh, version, which was used on the Comet. So it doesn't have quite the same performance. It's a little bit worse than the standard 17 pounder. Doesn't get um, the Sabo shell either right now. Um, just the standard AP shots. But it also features pretty decent mobility. Armor-wise, you know, nothing impressive, really. You may see some bounces on this, like, if you're lucky. But again, you know, it's not really armor that in any way is going to be reliable. But there is a new um, feature we can sort of show off in RB, at least. This has always been the case. Uh, not always been the case, but uh, more recently been the case in Simulator. For RB now, if you go into the site, hit a little range find. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Oh, my God. That wasn't you, was it? That, that wasn't me at all. Does it for you. Look at that. Technology did that for me. So, um, this is the case for all tanks in RB mode that use a laser rangefinder, uh, so you can effectively press the button and it will also range. Um, yeah, so there's nothing really else to go into with that particular um, advantage, but, I mean, it's going to be, this is going to change a lot, I think. Quick question, t quick question, Tom. What shell are you using right now on it's, this one? I think it's, it's the final shell. Uh, is it Mark 8 or Mark 6? I'm not sure. It's different Should for the... Mark 8. In my test yeah. drive, it actually did a lot of spalling damage. Like, a lot yeah. of spalling damage. They are really good for that. Like, these, um, the AP of the British get. Very much so. Now, yeah. this is a real vehicle. Uh, are you in a realistic mode, yeah? Should be RB, yep. It's got decent mobility. It does have a high top speed of about 92 kilometers per hour, I believe. It's, of course, not going to be that fast on rough terrain, given that it is a wheeled vehicle, so don't expect to do too well on frozen paths and stuff like that, which is going to just bog you down. But on uh, city maps with paved roads, this is going to be quite a fast little boy. Yeah. And as you can see, it doesn't have any stabilizers, sadly. Yep. But honestly, this is probably for the better, given the battle rating it is at currently. Keep mind, work in progress, battle ratings are subject to change, all the good stuff. But I'm looking forward to this. I mean, the Brits always needed some uh, some mobile vehicles to yeah, compensate for their... Uh, Assault tanks and this this is quite an interesting one. It's going to be really good if it stays at four seven because they've got the lineup there with the Church Seven, the Avenger, True. Firefly. They've got like a whole lineup of good stuff. True. So that's going to be a huge like buff to that lineup there with the light tank. I think honestly, it's in terms of gameplay, I would say this plays a bit like a British EBR, but without the the high penetration shells. Yeah, pretty much. And the I mean, of course. Yeah, it sort of fills a different role. I mean, they didn't really have any light vehicles that could really be used there. I mean. The only thing really before, I mean, with the armored cars, um, so the predecessor to this design, and then um, the AEC, if you had that, sort of lucky enough to have that, so they didn't really have anything light this low down. 
So yeah, it's going to be interesting wherever it ends up. It offers a different play style in any case, which is always nice. I'm a fan. Indeed. Okay, shall we move on to the next nation? Uh, next up, we have Japan. <clears throat> Which doesn't quite get new indigenous designs, at least just right now. Keep in mind, there might still be more additions before the launch of the patch. We have the Japanese M47 now coming to the game in the uh, tech tree. I'm actually going to show you the position of it in the tech tree mm -hmm. right after the STA3. Filling a little bit of a gap here between the STA3 and the STB1. Sadly, there's currently no other Japanese tank, at least not in RB mode, that has a 7.3 battle rating, so it doesn't really have a full lineup with it, but I discovered something. Yeah. And I think it makes sense. Because you know what else it's at, is at 7.3? Oh yes. The r 2 It's going to be pretty good, yeah. I mean, it's kind of nice that it's in this spot because you can sort of use it as a backup to the STB now at 7.7. And you can main it if you want to use, um, well, you have the premium type 75, or if you have the, um, uh, you probably use the uh, hurry prototype as well, production rather, in yeah. that lineup at 7.3. Like, it's not going to be like amazing at that BR anymore, but... That's the thing, 7.3, it doesn't really matter too much if you update yourself from 7.0 to 7.3 because you don't really get see many 6.0 down tiers anyway. Yeah, pretty much. It's Mostly really everyone plays 6.3 where like the, the first uh, Tiger Porsche is, for example. Yeah. And um, since it is 7.3, you also don't get up tiers into 8.7. So just it, it's a nice spot, yeah, even though it doesn't really spot. have a, a backup to the lineup other than the R2 Y2s. It is still a nice spot. You don't really sacrifice too much by bringing your 7.0 lineup up. I can show some of the camos as well. I mean, these are pretty much the standard Japanese camos, nothing special there. The late green, I do like this camo a lot. It's really nice. This is right? really, really nice. Like, it should be, like, super simple, but it just works with these tanks in a way that it doesn't on, like, the other vehicles, which is kind of nifty to me. And we also have the shells, which are basically your standard 90mm cannon shells for the Americans. It's an M47, but for the Japanese. There you go. Pretty much. Now, we have something quite interesting for China, actually. We do. A lot of interesting things for China. For the longest time, we have heard our players asking for Radar SBA for China. Up until now, the top tier Chinese lineup has been lacking a little bit. They've been getting some vehicles here and there, but they, they've they been lacking in their ability to defend themselves against air. Yeah. So, how about we change that? Let me just quickly make sure I'm not leaking something. Okay, we're good. Uh, welcome three new Japanese vehicles. Let's start off with the Chinese? least interesting one. Chinese, Chinese, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just created a massive uh, political scandal, <laughs> haven't I? Please, no. talk, talk about the lovely vehicles, okay. Mike. Talk about the, the lovely, lovely vehicles. vehicles. The WMA301 is the new uh, premium uh, vehicle for the Chinese tech tree. This is basically a uh, PTL02. Where is it? Uh, yep. PTL02 at uh, slightly higher battery ranking because it has a slightly better cannon. This comes equipped with a 105mm cannon, not 100mm cannon like the uh, PTL02 in the tech tree does. Mm. What this allows you to do, which is not quite uh, ready quite yet, so keep in mind this little place sort of stuff, you can fire a um, HEVT shell against aircraft, which is going to be quite interesting. You have still the same APTS as you do on the PTL02, but you can fire an ATGM through the can barrel itself. And this is a tandem warhead. Oh, it is? Yeah, I didn't notice that. Oh, very nice. Which means not only do we have a ton of penetration with this ATGM, it is mouse aimed, of course, as well, and has actually pretty decent uh, speed. Did you see that? 370 meters per second is That's not bad really for an ATGM. Quick, yeah. That's really oh, good. Nice. Um, of course, you're going to suffer a bit in reload time, 23 seconds when you load the ATGM, because it takes a lot, lot yeah. longer to shove in an ATGM than it does to shove in a shell. But essentially, what this allows you to do is defeat ERA with little to no issues. You have the first shell, you can see in the animation, you have the first part of the warhead, um, which is like a smaller uh, heat warhead exploding the ERA, the ERA block. And then you have the second larger warhead right behind to go through the armor itself, yeah. which makes it really quite nice. I can give you a quick test drive just to show you the mobility. I mean, it is the PTL02 base, so you're not really going to see too much of a difference there, but uh, we can show you a bit of the mobility in that regard. And also if it has stuff like night vision which is us uh not the most um high of resolutions but it's actually quite usable i think this should be about the um, generation two i think it's two yeah yeah that's quite useful it yeah. is really quite useful nice. sadly i don't have any uh, aircraft in the test drive to test the hevt shells against but uh, you get the general gist of it wheeled vehicle i still can't believe how derpy this thing looks on the front to be honest I know, it, it's, look it, at it 
It looks like a toy. Do you know what I mean? It really does. Like, I do like that it has real, 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 real stealing, like the uh, Parkwagen does, which is really quite nice. Makes it actually quite mobile in close quarters. Hmm. And the camo is really nice as it well. Is, yeah. I love the Chinese camos. They're absolutely amazing. But uh, it just. Uh, th 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 that house is way too turpy. It is. It way is too turpy. Thing. It's like a little chibi. Very much. Bless. Oh, well. <laughs> okay. Let's move on to the main star of the show, at least when it comes to the Chinese tech tree, which are the two. Radar SPAA. Yeah, not only one. You're getting two. Two. Rejoice, the five Chinese players out there who have topped you. Oh, man, they're having a whale of a time. Even Probably. better now. Yes, even better now. Okay, starting off with the PGZ09. This looks like a Gepard, because it basically is. <laughs> <laughs> this is the new 8.0 battery rating uh, SPAA coming right after the WZ305. Of course, going to be... Um, actually, I'm not sure if, not even sure if it's going to be better because the ZSU57 that this uh, WZ305 is based on doesn't have the fuse shell, so it's more of a TD, really. Uh, this, this one, one does, though. Yeah, it does. That's the point. Hmm. Um, but it doesn't have radar. It doesn't, which no. This one does. Hmm. And it's actually very, very mobile, this thing, actually. It's um, deceptively yeah. quick. Uh, let me quickly sh load up the ground uh, realistic stats. Yeah, that's a over 20 horsepower per ton. That's not bad at no. all. For track vehicle, decent top speed as well. It is quite a low hull, which is nice. Of course, you're going to have a massive uh, profile with the turret and the, ra the SPA, uh, the radar on top as well. But uh, yeah, it's quite an interesting one. Oh. Now, this does get the same ammunition loads as the Gepard right now. You have this uh, DM23 13mm shell with 127mm uh, of penetration, which is uh, more than enough to go through the sides of any tank, any top tier tank you're going to face. Um, but much like the Gepard, it does have the limited ammunition reserve of this yes. shell. So if you do want to take out DM23, I think you only have around 30 shells. We can actually take it, uh, test it out on test drive real quick. And uh, you have to keep that in mind if you want to use this in a anti-tank capability. Which you shouldn't really be doing mainly. This is an anti-aircraft vehicle, given that it has the uh, radar. Yeah, but it's pretty quick, though. Ah, it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good. Good acceleration, actually, yeah. for a realistic mode, especially. It's like the maneuverability on it, like the way it's uh, sort of turning oh. and everything, it's, it's decent. I believe it also gets thermal sights, and these are actually really quite clear. Yeah, yeah. I don't mind these at all. And as you can see, you have a quite limited amount of D shells, but... Yeah. Decently quick reload between switching the belts, so you're not really stuck uh, loading for too long if you want to switch to your AA belts. And for the secondary belt, you can also take the API shells, which have about 68mm of penetration, I believe. Now, this does have radar. If I can find an aircraft flying around, where are you? Dun, dun, dun. Should be around there somewhere. They get quite low over that side, I think. They do. They usually tend to, to go behind the, the hill. Ah, there you go. So you do have the radar to lock onto. Um, it does give you the leading if it's in within range, but you don't get any proxy shells with this SPA in particular, so you have to hit them directly. You have plenty of ammo and plenty of fire rate, so you should be too. You shouldn't have too much of an issue, and it has a uh, decent low profile as well. But uh, yeah, keep it in mind. Hmm. Okay, I just want to test something. The reverse speed. Look at him go. That is. Not great, but not terrible either. I fly eight oh for like kind of backing out into cover. Like it's it's not too bad. Yeah, it's, it's not too bad. Yeah. It's not too bad. I mean, it's it's not as bad as some of the Russian tanks out there. That's for sure. This is very true. And there you go. He's got a hole in his left wing. That's very funny. Incredibly, incredibly funny. <laughs> but this is not the only radar SPA that China is getting this patch. No, no, no. We have one that is even kind of more amazing, to be honest. Yeah, kind. You've seen the devlog for it already, of course. This is the PGZ-04A. This is based on the same chassis as the previous one, but with a different turret, a Chinese native design, and I really like the way these guns look. They just look mean. Oh, they, lo they, they look, look so mean. mean. See, the thing is, normally on other SBA, you don't really see them because they're like in a housing or something like that. These are completely exposed. They're just hanging out. They are amazing. And you notice some weird tubes above the top as well. Curious. Hmm. Curious. I wonder what that might be. Me too. Yeah. This is going to be your top tier SPAA uh, with 25mm gun. Uh, think of it kind of like a shield cat with a little bit more power, perhaps. Yeah, these uh, are, unless I'm misremembering, the, these are the same 25mm that are found on the Ansia earlier in the tree. Um, oh, yeah, that's, that's a good point, yeah. The name I cannot recall. Uh, on the very long reload, but pretty decent damage against aircraft. So, yeah, the, the guns themselves are pretty good, like kind of Sadami. You know what I mean? 
like yeah. uh, the Italian one. So yeah, they're pretty good. In this case, you can take a full belt with the AP if you want to. Um, although you're going to be suffering a bit against aircraft if you are going to do that. Although you do have the SAMs to do that, to compensate for that. SAMs? What could they be? Oh my god, what could they be? There you go. You can see the stats on the screen right now. These are your surface-to-air missiles. You can get a total of uh, four of them. And these are not amazing. These are not amazing. I have a feeling you're not going to have the greatest of time trying to go against aircraft with these. But against helicopters, they're actually quite good. Okay. Let's move on to Italy. Tom has been waiting for a while now to show off his... You like this one, don't you? I do. I like it. In, for many ways. Look at it. Look at this boy. We've been waiting for this for a really long time. And it's a very cool one indeed. Dardo. IFV. Pretty nice. Lots of interesting features about this one. Um, it's, it's kind of... I want to say it's not too dissimilar as an analog to the M3A3 Bradley right now because it, it does similar things, but it's a very, very different functionally. So uh, we have a look at the stats here. It fires... Um, I think this is the same belt that the uh, M3A3 fires as well. It's the same belt and also gets the Toto Bs. Toto Bs, regular Toto 2s and everything else here. It doesn't quite get the same level of thermal. Um, I believe it's only two and it probably gets three, the Gen 3. Um, Armor-wise, we can take a look. It's, you know, nothing really impressive at this point. You're not going to be really expecting anything impressive from vehicles like this, but it doesn't really matter. I think there's also an extra, yeah, extra bit of armor underneath this uh, extra plate here. So if we can take it into a little test drive. Have a neb. Uh, one actually uh, different feature about this is that the gun fires incredibly quick. It's about, it's nearly three yes. times as quick as the regular Bradley's gun. That is uh, very speedy. It is actually rapid. That's actually really good. It's for faster than the ADATs people. as well, I think. So um, yeah, pretty nice. Uh, very responsive, very mobile. Um, has the thermals as well. Gen 1, I believe that is. Uh, so, you know, nothing amazing. But for the vehicle itself, not bad at all. And it does get the um, Toe 2s. As well, these are, I think the regular toes. No, the toe two bees. They do are they are the um, oh, yes, top down firing ones. That's the one, yeah. And it's also a new sound. I think we couldn't work out if it was like the the proper sound or it was like a very sped up clip, but it does sound like a new sound. Little, I little... I, t um, I think it it sounds like a cable being pulled. Yeah, that's what we thought. But yeah, it's a very nice sound actually. I don't know, but yeah, it's it's pretty cool. I like it. I like all the little details and stuff. Can so, check out the reverse speed real quick of this uh, thing. I can. So this plays quite similar to the M3A3 we introduced in the uh, last update. And the Toto Bs are really quite menacing. Yeah, very nice little tank. I like the cam on the, on the town tanks as well. They, this one's quite yeah, nice. Yeah, like the late camo is really nice. Very nice indeed. They've got a good thing going on. I can respect that. And very fast as well. I believe the reload is quite quick as well. So very quick to change the, um, the belts. Just carries on. Just yeah. carries on. That's actually really good. Holy doesn't crap. care. Just doesn't care. Not bad, not bad Unless at all. the gun overheats, in which case it does care. But nevertheless. Mostly, pretty good. There you go. Something else for the Italians. Yeah. Now the Italians are not the only minor nation getting some love this patch. We have something for the French as well. Yes, we do. And I will. It's, it's it's a weird one. I'm. I. This is going to be a parental parental advisory. Okay. What you're about to see might scar you. Maybe. Um. I. Well, Tom will show you because this it's is just, just again. Um. It, it looks like a toy. Look at it. It's like as tall as it is long. What is that? I don't... Well, I mean, it's, it's the ITO 90M. Right? Uh, you might notice this. You might note as the Crotal NG. This is a uh, French SPAA. And it... Uh, uh, no, I, I, I can't deal with it. It's just... It has a 5G tower on it. Look at it. That is quite immense. <sighs> and yes, Why is it this, so tall? I, I can't answer that, I'm afraid. But pretty nice. Uh, it's the VT1 as well, which is the same that's as a very the good uh, Flarac. Rad. Flarac Rad, yeah. It do. And um, so yeah, the performance of this thing, pretty nice. Uh, it only gets the uh, missiles that are in the tubes, so it doesn't get a reload right now. Um, it's decently mobile, not so much off-road. Just, what is that? Look at it. Look at that, like, visual dead zone I'm getting right now. Terrible. Uh, keep in mind right now, this is work in progress, so the animations aren't quite ready yet. I have a feeling that uh, once they are ready, you will be able to at least take down the top part of the radar posts. Yes. It looks like it has the space behind it to, to fall down, but yeah, just a weird one. Those missiles are actually really quite good. They are not lock-on missiles. You do have to guide them manually. They're kind of like mouse aimed at gems, but for anti-aircraft duties. And they have a very long range, 10 kilometers. So they are very good for uh, going up in helicopters that are hovering above the battlefield very far away. They are. And if you sort of land them underneath tanks, you can pop them off as well, which is quite nice. Yeah, I mean, these are big missiles. I think 163 millimeters of uh, diameter. Yeah, they are like that. immense. They are, uh, they pack a punch. Hefty they pack boys. a punch, for sure. Hefty boys. So, yeah, this is going to be the new French SPA with the VT-1 missiles. Finally, a defense against the 
very long uh, range helicopters out there and I uh, just can't get over how weird it looks. It is a bit strange. Uh, it's so derpy. I cannot deny that. I already thought the flat rocket was looking weird, but this is this is beating Yeah, that. it sort of takes it to the next level in a way. Very much so. Indeed. Okay, but the French are actually not the only ones getting this uh, this SPA. No, no, no. The we also have the Swedish getting the exact same uh, vehicle, but with the Swedish camos. And I just have to shout out the Swedish camos here because they absolutely look amazing. I mean, the French one, they have a very interesting zebra cam kind of camo as well, the blue one. Yeah, that's but true. But this one is even better. Now, you might notice this is actually a Finnish vehicle in the Swedish tree, of course. Uh, this was bought by the Finnish from the French. The vehicle itself is French. And you can now find it at the end of the SPAA line as well. Right after the Azerat R. Very Which cool. Which is going to be a quite nice, uh, quite nice um, lineup together with your top tier vehicle. Especially now that, which is what I'm going to show you next, we have commander sites mm. for top tier tanks. You might have seen the um, devlog that was posted, I believe, today or yesterday even. And it details a new site mechanic for top tier tanks. And I'm going to show you how it works with these uh, SDRV 122 PLSS. Now, uh, actually, yeah, okay. I can do it with the AG shells as well. So, this will require some uh, keybinds or not, depending on what you want to do, really. So, by default, if you switch through the site options, you don't go to the commander site. What you can do, however, is go into the options, I believe in the ground vehicle battle settings, and there is an option over here which you can enable. It's not enabled by default, but you can enable it. And if you do that, you can switch to the commander side through cycling through the view. So first you have the gunner view, then you have the commander view. Now, the commander view by itself is separate from the controls of the turret. And you can see it's a bit slow. It does have a turret traverse speed, a side speed, which is not like the binoculars, which you can just flip around like crazy. Now, what this is going to do is change some things, which is mainly taking away some features from the binocular side. You might notice that I no longer have um, thermal sights on the binoculars. Oh so no. Oh no. What oh no. This mean? Oh no. But not to worry because you now have thermal sights on the commander side. And you can zoom it in as well. Which is going to make it a bit more useful at longer ranges than the binocular sights. Yes, indeed. Now, what you can also do is actually control the gun. So much like the binocular sights, if you point to somewhere and you tap or hold your fire button, it will uh, put the turret towards that direction. It's like the one telling the gunner to turn the turret. But what you can also do is, uh, I need to quickly find it. I think it's uh, Commander, right? Commander Fire Control. I'm gonna put this on. No, uh, some key binds. Let's pickle. say, no. <laughs> go B, B, I use B. I, I'll just use D, T, that T. works as well. Okay, there you go. Uh, you can also see you can actually bind the button if you want to, to directly go into Commander View if you don't want to have it cycle through your views. Um, and now that we have done this, I can press the button. And you can see a little pop-up on the top left. It's kind of obscured by the, by the work in progress, but I hope you can see it properly. Now, the turret actually follows my commander side. Yeah. And now this is where things get spicy. Spicy, he says. Uh, Tom mentioned this before. All vehicles with a laser rangefinder can now, in RB modes, automatically adjust their range. So I'm going to go for, let's say... I'm actually going to switch over to my HE shell. It's going to fire this off in the distance because it's going to be the best way of showing it off. I'm going to aim at, let's see, there's a tank over to the right side here, which is about 900 meters away, I believe. At the neb. Laser range find. Did you see the, the little blip? Hmm. I'm going to do it in the um, gun side as well. I'm just going to press the range of button and nothing else. Hmm. Wow. What could this mean? Curious. Curious. Laser rangefinders, tanks that are equipped with laser rangefinders, can now automatically adjust the gun range at um, in RB mode. And this is any tank with laser range fighters right now, which is quite uh, quite good. You don't have to be in the commander side for that. And what this allows you to do is actually quite interesting, because by doing this, you might notice that in the commander side you don't have range lines, so if you you don't really have a way of compensating for the altitude of the gun. But with this, you can. <laughs> All you have to do is range find the target, have the active aim mode on, and point and click essentially. Yeah. It's not going to be extremely useful with APFSDS because the one drawback I found the most is that you are not quite as accurate with the commander sights. It's it's a bit harder to yeah, pinpoint yeah, sure. exactly where you want to shoot, especially because the gun sight actually has a bit more zoom. As you can see, this is commander this is gunner sight, commander sight doesn't have quite as much zoom. So at longer range, it's not quite as accurate. 
but it's very quick. It's extremely quick and easy to use, which is quite nice. And especially when you use HE, it compensates uh, automatically for the drop of the shell, which is incredibly good. Pretty nice. Uh, we're going to maybe answer some questions about this towards the end of the stream, if you have some time left over. But let's actually show off one of the new maps. Yeah. We have a new map to show you, a new tank map. Now, you have a vehicle ready? Yes, I'll go with this one. To show off? Okay. So I'm going to quickly create a custom battle and I'm going to invite Tom in and we are going to show you the new tank map called uh, Red Sands, I believe. Red Desert. Red Desert. Red Desert. This is a um, map set in Africa and it is intended to be for top tier tanks. Yes. It's a quite large map with some wide open sidelines and some terrain cover every now and then. Da -da -da. Let me quickly set this up and I'm going to invite you as well. Thanking you. We are going to be showing you the view from the air and from the ground. Tom is going to be out in a ground vehicle and I'm going to be out in an air vehicle. And we are going to see how it goes. I shall need to be on the end team just because we yes, don't have bots enabled here. No bots. But we should be good to go. Okay. Yep. I'm also going to show you what the screen itself looks like when it loads. There you go. So you can get a bit of a general layout of the map. It's a very big map though, like deceptively large from that picture I found. It is. It is. Is it about three kilometers across? Is it a bit more? A bit less? Uh, actually, it tells you about the bottom. Yeah, actually more. It might be four even. It is, uh, yeah. You have the scale at the bottom, which tells you about the uh, the distance. Quite immense. Okay. Tom's going to bring out a tank. I'm going to bring out a Harrier to show you the map in hover mode from the skies. Better and not crash. we'll have a bit of a uh, nap. Now, are you going to go towards the left side or the right side? I'll go left side. Left side. Okay. I'll check out the valley in the middle area. You can see the caps are pretty much equidistant from both bases, which is good. Means that there's always a good fight over any cap. And we shall see how this goes. Can you blow those okay. up, I wonder? That's a very bright map, actually. I like that. Yeah, that's pretty nice. I'd say if I can, in terms of like content creation, desert maps are some of the best because the PC doesn't have to fight as much with uh, contrast and dark edges. Yeah, it's true, yeah. They always end up looking pretty good. I yes. found that, yeah. FPS also tend to be very good. Normally what kills FPS is the most is grass. Mm -hmm. You don't have any grass on this map. It's true. Can I destroy those? Uh, I don't think you can, no. Oh. You should be able to destroy some of the buildings towards the uh, middle of the map, though. Okay. Yeah, it's looking pretty this decent. This is the view from the air. Let me quickly do my vector control. There we go. So yeah, you can see this is actually a very, very big. That A cap is three counters away and I'm over the C cap. That's quite a distance to, to travel here. Yeah. You have a bit of a, it's kind of a, it's shaped a bit like an arena. You have those outskirts rocks, which don't allow you to really go outside. You can escape into the desert if, the, if it wasn't for the uh, uh, out of bounds uh, mechanic. Mm -hmm. But uh, I really like this area over here. It's really nice. Actually, I, I've yeah. actually seen a comment from one of our content creators who saw the um, earlier Russian death stream. Mm -hmm. The layout reminds you a lot of um, 38 Parallel. Kind actually. of does, yeah, I can see what you mean. Yeah. Like this little area on the left here, mm. wide open area of here, which would be a mountain in the uh, 30th parallel side, not here. And a little bit of a um, water and area over here. Yeah. It's quite a nice one. There is a lot of open space on this map, which is sort of quite, um, well, it's, we haven't really seen something this open, I think, before. Maybe Folder, but like even then there's like lots of kind of... Um, I mean, Folder has a lot of trees blocking a cover, cover, like a visual cover. But you here, don't here. There's a lot of uh, open space, which is kind of interesting. I think that's going to mean... You are going to need to use these rocks to kind of block sight lines passively while you drive, which is going to be pretty interesting to see how that works. Like, um, there's so much of it. And as well, there's not really, uh, I guess apart from the dunes, uh, much um, hull down cover either, which is going to be interesting in terms of gameplay. It's going to keep people moving around a little bit. You can need to peek these corners, which is, you know, in turn going to put you a bit more of at risk. So, yeah, it's, it's an interesting kind of style of design, especially in terms of how, like, uh, the matches play, I guess. There's not a lot of um, areas where you're going to be completely safe either. And there's a lot of... I know, I like the open space. I'm interested to see how that's going to go, actually. Again, this is really a map designed for top tier conflict. You have multiple kilometers of sidelines that are more than possible to find uh, engagements at. Or, if you don't want that, you can actually use the, the cover of the rocks and the cover of these like rolling hills and stuff like that to try and make your way towards the cap point. With this is the B cap point, has actually quite a bit of cover. Yeah. And of course, there are lots of uh, opportunities for our enemies to set up a um, defensive position, trying to intercept anyone who's trying to attack. But the cap itself is pretty well defended. You have lots of rocks and lots of houses here to, to take cover in. Uh, over in the sea cap as well, you have the cover of the rocks themselves, which are quite nice. And are you any closer to the A cap yet? I am. Oh, you're right on the A cap. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, we're going to show that in a second. You can also see the sea cap over here, which has actually quite a bit of cover. The sea cap is very well defended from uh, long range attacks. Yeah, thinking about it, you know, like, an interesting thing about this map in terms of the layout, if you look at the map itself on the bottom right, it seems like left is very open, the B cap is sort of like a middle ground, and C is quite close. So that kind of offers every kind of playstyle you want. You can kind of go from there. Like, you know, if you want to play long range, A, mid, B, close C. And that's kind of interesting. It sort of accommodates for every playstyle in that sense. So it's going to be interesting. I have no idea how this is going to really play yet. It depends on sort of what exactly um, the BR rotation is going to be where this is available. But it's a pretty much a really wide map, uh, at least as far as engagements go. Like, Folder is very big, but you can't really shoot, uh, like, in really long sight lines apart from a couple of different places. So, yeah, this is going to be interesting. It's uh, sort of new, I guess, in terms of design. Hello there. Hi. How are you doing over there? I'm doing just fine. That's an interesting little uh, data you have over there. Yeah, don't believe me. I'm not going to believe, don't you worry. But yeah, this is the new tank map, which you will be able to play in in the upcoming updates. Okay. Now, Tom, I believe it is time to move on to the next vehicle that we have. I believe so. Which, um, we have shown all the tanks that we have available right now. We are now going to move over to the aircraft section of this uh, dev preview of this update preview. Yes. So, Tom, do you have it ready? Uh, I do. There you are. Okay, the Swedish starting yep. out with. Well, it's not even a Swedish thing, but, well, sort of is. Swedish tree. Finish um, 109G6. Very, very nice. I like the camo on that as well. It's got a little depth face. Oh, that's very derpy. <laughs> it's very sweet, yeah. So, yeah, rank 4 premium, 5.3, pretty much functionally identical to the G6 in the German tree. Nothing, I guess, um, extra to kind of note on this one. I can show you the armament, though, of which it gets a decent amount, obviously, cannons and the... Wurfgraten. There we go, teamwork. And the bomb as well. So, yeah, standard loadout, really. Nice camo, new premium, which is... it's. Pretty useful, I think, especially for um, you know, the Swedish tree to have something that's kind of familiar. Like all of these other vehicles are, you know, pretty much unique. But to have something a premium-wise that is at least familiar to people who've played other trees, well, I think yeah. that's always quite useful. Uh, it's an easy one to kind of, you know, slip into to go through the tree, which is pretty good. Yeah. And the nice. G six is a pretty good aircraft. Really well. good plane. One of the nicest ones, the G six. So yeah, pretty versatile. I mean, it's not the best um, a sort of cast, I suppose. But the rockets are decently good. I mean, the single bomb as well, you know, can be pretty effective. So it's a nice little. Versatile plane to kind of give it a little boost. Does it have any secondary camos by any chance? I don't know. Ah, uh, it does not. So. It does not. There's one aircraft we are going to show later on that has a lot of secondary camos, which is They're kind of amazing. amazing. Yes, I love it. I'm so simple with camos. It's like nice colors. Yes, brain happy. Yes, that's it. That's Bright colors. Takes. That's yeah. that's how you do YouTube thumbnails as well. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Okay, speaking of, well, this isn't really bright colors, but I guess close enough. We have something for the French players out there as well. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome the Mystère 4A. This is going to be the new French jet coming up in the next update. And um, I have to admit, I don't know too much about French jets. I don't really know. I, I only pretty much play the Mirage, and that's that's really it. Yeah. I'm, I'm more of a Delta Wing fan. I'm more of a fan of this one. More of a Delta boy. But yeah, this is a Tech 3 aircraft. You can see it in the Mirage line just before the Super Mystère. Uh, yeah, I, I guess it's a Mirage line, yeah. So just before the Super Mystère, filling out the 8.7 spot over here quite nicely. And it does have a decent amount of suspended ordnance if you want to take a look at that. You mentioned some Nords here. These are certainly not the AS-20 Nords, so these are not the same ones as you can find on the G-91, which allow you to ground strike quite effectively. These are the AA Nords, which are limited to air-to-air -air, uh, combat. Now, these actually are quite useful if you are able to um, lure the enemy into head-ons, because these have an air fuse. So if they sense an aircraft nearby, they do explode. And they are very big uh, missiles, mm. so they do a lot of damage. They're really good at head-ons as well, I found. Yes, you can yes, really believe very good at like that. that. Uh, you can aim them with your keyboard if you want to, but honestly, that's going to be very hard to do against an aircraft, so you're better off just using them. Either if you're directly behind someone, or if you're directly in front of someone. That's when these are really at their best. You also have a fair option of snaps and uh, bombs. You also have a, a bunch of 151mm um, heat rockets over here, which have a decent amount of penetration. But overall, this is really more of an addition for the cast of fiction artists out there. I'm not expecting this to be too good at air-to-air -air combat, given that it completely lacks any kind of guarded air-to-air -air missiles. And the mystères tend to be mediocre, at mm -hmm. best, I yeah, would say. they're not like... They're not, I mean, not really the best aircraft out there. No. Not at all. Now, you may be able to hear something in the background, which is Tom in a new 
Italian jet. Yeah, I love it. I love it. What could this be? What could this be? Uh, let's let's see if the chat can guess it. It starts with an S. Starts with an S. It starts with an S. Can you guess what the aircraft is? It's an Italian jet, a new Italian jet. That's the Tetri one as well, isn't it? Yep. Okay, good. Eight point three. Look at this boy. Look at it. I love it. I love it so much. I it's, can't quite put my finger on what it looks like. It's like a baby between like a Swift and a Flora, the Yak um, the twenty-three. Yeah, yeah, the under the undermounted um, engine. Yeah. yeah. So it's um, what is it? The Sagittario. Sagittario. Yeah, Sagittario uh, two, which is a very nice, very nimble as well jet, uh, with two uh, effectively Aidens in the nose. Very, very nice, very maneuverable, and pretty nippy. And it's a nice little uh, unique uh, aircraft, currently at uh, 8.3. No um, cast options, but it is, uh, for all intents and purposes, a very maneuverable fighter right now, so... What I guns it? Uh, I think it gets the 30mm defa cannons, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. They're kind of, um, I believe they're sort of an indigenous designation or sort of construct, but they're functionally the same as, um, as those, so they are very familiar. And Pretty much very similar to the Aiden cannons, if you know those not the Hunters, they are quite good. Although you only get two on these, I believe. Mm -hmm. But I think it's 240 rounds. Which so is actually not bad at all. Yep. Pretty I'm going to show it to you in the hangar as well, just so you can see the uh, the stats and all the good stuff, if you don't mind. Yeah, go for it. There you go. The Sagittarius in the hangar, there you go. 8.7 in... Why does it always keep on switching? <laughs> 8.7 in a realistic mode. It is right after the Vampire in the interesting Saber line, actually. Yep. Ooh, curious. Curious. Okay, 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 not too bad. Now, this has the following options available. Again, this is a work in progress, so none of this is uh, final. It might get ground options, it might not, we don't quite know. But it does get the 30 mm cannons, which are very similar to the Aidens on the Hunter. And if you use the ground target belt, you can actually do some decent damage against um, ground targets as well. Yeah. They're not bad at all, actually. Really I really like these. Yeah. Sadly, you only get two. Sadly, you only get 240 rounds of ammunition. But uh, this is decent enough to get a couple of kills with it, and it looks really interesting, I have to say. Yeah, pretty nice. Pretty looks nice. Looks sleek. I do. I mean, it's Italian, of course it looks sleek. Yeah. It's, it's just pretty. I mean, I love it. I love the design. It's like, I don't know, I like small jets, like um, uh, the Goblin as well, I really like. You know what I mean? It's the one that kind of parasite oh, yeah. dropped out of B-29s. Oh, boy. That'd be that, amazing, that's, right? That looks weird, to be honest. Yeah. It's just, I, know, I like the weird looking stuff. It's always my favorite. Funny you should mention an American plane, though. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> You might yeah. have seen it earlier ago when we were showing off the uh, M47. Tom has captured something. Yep. I certainly have. A little capture. Yeah, this is the P-51C 11 NT for uh, Japan in the premium tree, rank 3. And um, yeah, Evelina. This is, um, uh, it's got a lot of history. I don't really know all of it, but I know this plane was part of the Flying Circus, which is a, a sort of um, a fighter group of captured planes that they um, brought around to like uh, Japanese fighter squadrons to kind of test them out against like what you know the enemy's aircraft were like how to combat them and stuff so this aircraft toured around um a lot of squadrons so they could fight against it learn its strengths and weaknesses and stuff and uh yeah it's had a lot of life um functionally the same as the p51c in the us tree although i believe the only it doesn't get any grunt ordnance no ordnance and it gets late belts the other one only gets mid-war belts late belts are very good yeah very very good and i think because this aircraft was a later version used it's um i think in even in 1945 this thing was touring so it um yeah it's a later variant but flight wise it's pretty much exactly the same nice little captured premium with a you know history as well like with a story behind it um, interesting enough it only has um four machine guns yeah but i have to say i i love that they didn't even put any effort into recamoing this thing yeah they just much. stuck some some imperial japanese uh, decals on the over the u.s air force decals and it's good yeah they kept the name as well evelina it's very sweet you would expect no. Japanese to kind of like try to camo it, but I guess this is more authentic, right? Yeah, pretty much. And oh, I like it. It's got a nice story. Like, um, yeah, definitely look it up. This uh, aircraft went around a lot and did a lot of stuff. They learned a lot from this plane. So it's really nice to have it in. Yeah. So that is one of the new premiums that you can expect in the Japanese air attack tree coming up in the next update. If you like P-51s and you want to have a Japanese one, yep. there you go. Very cool. Uh, moving on to something else that also has some red decals. We have a new jet for the Chinese. A new top tier jet, in fact. Mm -hmm. Welcome the J7E. This is very close in performance to the MiG-21 MF. It's not quite a biz, it's nowhere near a biz in fact. Uh, it's quite close to the MF in terms of performance and it has an interesting wing design, a bit of, uh, of a different one. What this essentially means is that you have the engine power from the MF in a bit of a more maneuverable uh, airframe. Oh. Uh, we're going to take it out in test drive because it also has some new ordnance options. 
I'm going to warn you right away, what you're going to see in the test drive is not the final flight model. The final the flight model is not finished yet, so it flies very much like an, like an MF. Uh, but uh, you can expect a, a bit of a refined MiG-21 experience yeah. when this actually launches. And I do actually... I, I'm usually not a fan of bare-looking planes, but there's something about the white Chinese camera that looks really nice. It looks does look really, really nice. nice, like on the Q5 as well. Like it, it, I don't know, it fits. It looks really nice. Very nice. Very nice indeed. I'm going to show you some of the ordnance options and the modifications. Modifications are pretty much the same. You do get flares and chaff on this one, which is very, very useful, and quite an amount of them as well. 72 is not bad That's at not all. That's not bad, yeah, definitely. Um, as you can see, you do have the chaff as well if you want to defeat uh, radar guard missiles, which are it's going to be a bit more useful in um, ground RBI, I have a feeling. And you have a new missile, the PL-5B. This is going to be the new best missile that the Chinese get. Kind of similar in performance to the AIM-9P. And it's quite a good one. Good launch range, good um, speed, and a good G-pull as well. But that's not the only new thing. I have you seen these rockets yet, Sam? Are they the ones the Q5 has, the late one? Maybe. I haven't played the Q5 I too much. I think the icon is different, but I think they're the same. I'm not sure. All I know is these go boom. They do go boom. They they go boom yeah. quite a bit. These are very, very powerful rockets. Now, at least currently this doesn't get the ballistic computer, so you don't get the pinpoint accurate drops of it. But uh, let's take a look and test drive and show you some of the well, the new missile, I suppose. I'm gonna take out four of the PL five Bs. Very cool. Have a whirl. I always like some new missiles. Yeah. That's always quite nice. And I really like the, the wind design. It's, I don't know. It's just, I don't know. It looks, um, it's hard to sort of pinpoint. Do you know what I mean? Like exactly why they're nice, but they just are like visually. The MiG-21 to me at least, uh, always look like a kite. Yeah. This looks like the kitest of kites. Yes. I don't yes, think it makes sense, but I just really like the wing design of this. Yeah, it's just nice. It's just pleasing. As you see some decent performance over here, of course, you're going to have the same climb rate as the MiG-21MF, which is very good, or very similar climb rate at least. And uh, right now the flight model, of course, is still unfinished, so I can't really show the flight performance because it's not representative of what we are going to see. But it's a nice aircraft. Galpit isn't quite done yet. Actually, it is the next aircraft that has a done cockpit. Oh, yes. Which is going to be actually quite interesting. <laughs> I, I can't believe that that thing exists. You're going beautiful. to see in a second. It is beautiful. Don't believe No! Don't it's believe. British! No, don't believe What do you mean? <laughs> it's very pretty. I love it. Um, well, the good thing is taste is subjective. Yeah. I just said it. Maybe we can ask the chat in a bit if they if they are more on the it's a pretty plane or if they are more on the I it's a it. fugly plane I love side. it. It's brilliant. It's like the sun you keep in the attic. It's great. Tom, do I need to call the police? No, no. I'm just thinking... Do <laughs> <laughs> I just the first thing that came to my mind was that episode of The Simpsons where like Bart has a brother in the attic and they feed him fish heads. And that's like the whole episode. And that was the first thing I thought of when I saw this. I don't remember that episode. It unlocked like a memory, like a whole week of memory from me from like ten years ago. Curious. Yeah. Hmm. I love it. Now I just noticed actually something on this MIG. The can load is pretty it's underwhelming. Exactly. You only yeah. have sixty rounds on this. Sixty and one gun as well. Only one. Yeah. Same not too the... good. I believe it has the oh, I can't see it right now. Yeah. I believe it has the twenty three millimeter cannon. The 30, I think. Okay, 30 is actually not too bad. 30 rounds, I mean, 60 rounds is still bad, but at least you can do a bit more damage with it. I think it's um, it's pretty much the same uh, armament that's on the first MiG-21 in the Russian tree, the F-13, I think. It's the 130. Um, yeah, kind of underwhelming, but I mean, you know, if you hit, you're going to hit hard, so. Oop. That's a nice explosion. That is a nice explosion. That is a very nice explosion. Wonderful. Okay, moving on to other planes with nice explosions. What does this mean? <sighs> I, just, I can't! I like it. Look at my boy. Tom! Look at him. What is that? I don't know the particulars. What I do know is that I like it a lot. So, this is the Sea Vixen. A very nice plane. Don't argue. It's just... I love it. It looks so bizarre in terms of the design there, especially with the cockpit design. But, uh, no guns as well. Only gets the, the red tops here. And a decent armament as well, if we look at the menu. So you've got the bullpup, and you can take uh, missiles with it as well. Not as good as the Buccaneer, like even close to that kind of performance, but I mean, in terms of um, the missiles, the Red Tops are 8-3, not too bad. The Red Tops are not too bad. Yeah. They're not too bad at all. Uh, now, there is a major drawback with this plane, which is that it doesn't have any guns. You are no very guns. much limited to the missiles. But since it's a premium plane, you get all the missiles unlocked immediately. Okay, let's try and do a... What is that second guy doing? He's just hanging out. <laughs> Don't bully him. He's he can't a... even see outside. He's having a whale of a time. Whale of a time. And also, look at that. 
How nice that is that? Is, okay, I have to admit, the cockpit is nice. That is really nice. I have to admit, that that is nice. That is very nice, but I... <laughs> Got a little you can't even see your co-pilot. Oh, yeah, he's just sort of... Yeah, you can't see him. Oh, a bit lonely then, I suppose. He's but, like Nigel's forgotten cousin. Oh, yeah, just sort of hanging out there. I mean, you know... Also, can I just mention, when, when you look at it from above, if you cut off the cockpit and the tail booms, it just looks like a Horton 229. That's very true. I can never unsee that now. Thank you for this. You're very welcome. This is the Brits attempt at a Horton 229 that went horribly wrong and they just gave up halfway through the mm. design progs and just stuck an elevator on it. See, so, yeah, maneuverability isn't too bad, but I believe if we just fly up with the mouse, it's going to take a while to turn. So you may need to use keyboard controls while you're flying this thing, at least sort of make it pull especially, because especially at high speed, this is going to be difficult to kind of roll over, get the uh, seeker on target. So... Yeah, it's decently maneuverable, I think, but it's going to be a bit tricky to fly, I guess, ultimately. Being what it is, having no guns, and I mean, keeping the speed up. But, I don't know, I like it. It's sort of, it's a different play style, you know, and it being a premium, you know, it's something you can play if you want. Uh, decent for uh, ground RB in any case. And, I don't know, I like it. I really like it. Just visually, it's just great. I like, I like one stuff. thing on it, which is the engines. It gets two of the Hunter engines. Yeah. Which means, no afterburner. Sadly, you're not going to go super Sunday with this, but um, they have a decent amount of grunt. And yeah. uh, pretty nice. Pretty nice. Okay, I can't look at that any longer. Let's look at Ash, uh, something that actually looks nice. I mean, I can't deny that. It looks <laughs> nice as well. So. <laughs> Moving on to the Russians. We have uh, three whole new jets. Two and a half, let's say that. Yeah. Coming in first, the Yak 28B. And can I just mention that if I've ever seen a plane that looks like, like a mosquito, this is it. Yeah, kind of. It's very pointy. Why is it so pointy? Pointy boy. It's a very pointy boy. Now, this is going to be the new uh, top attacker for the Russian uh, attack tree at 9.3, right after the TU-14. Jet bomber, essentially. Yeah, like and, a Valtor, I guess. Mm -hmm. And it can carry a decent bomb load, at least. This one also gets flares, which is very useful, so you're not going to be a uh, victim to missile spam, at least. You can carry flares and chaff as well. And uh, this one also gets the CCIP, I believe. We have to check it out in Death in a second. You may notice the gun is not exactly overwhelming. No, not the best cannon anyway, and the... Yeah, yeah. it's only 50 runs as well. You're going to burn mm, through that quick. Mm, it's not going to be great, that is for sure. You're not going to get many kills with the guns. But this is not a fighter. It's, it's designed to go fast and deliver a very big bomb to the target. You can carry up to a single 3,000 kilogram bomb, which does actually fit internally into the bomb bay, which I can show you into a test drive real quick. And it is quite nice. As you can see, you can take a uh, chaff and flares, which is always quite nice indeed. So let's give it a quick test flight here. Imagine essentially an IL-28 that does actually have flares and it goes a bit faster. Yeah, it's doesn't nice. quite have a cockpit yet, but I have a feeling this cockpit is going to be looking quite nice. Russian yeah. cockpits generally look quite nice. I do, I like the sort of um, teal tone they use for a lot of them as well. Yeah. Very sweet. Sadly, this is not one of the planes that has the teal underside, which makes me a bit sad, sad but... I know, you can't have everything. Yeah. I also like that they put like mini training wheels on the wingtips just to stabilize this thing out. Yeah. I like it visually. Very, very nice. Gear goes in quite easily, and the bomb bay just about perfectly fits <laughs> the bomb. That is kind of amazing how tight of a fit that is. Yeah. And it does I do get like a, that. It does get a bomb site as well, I believe. Uh, it does indeed, so you can do some high, alt high altitude bombing with this. Yeah. And it even gets the ballistic computer as well. Very Not sure if it does get the bomb ballistic computer. Let me quickly do a check. But if you want to do some limited ground attack, you can. Dun, 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 dun. Mm. And not at the moment, doesn't get the bomb uh, prediction. But since you have the bomb side, you kind of can compensate for yep. that yourself. I think it's for the, the gun, I guess. Yeah. You can see it, it does the gun at least. Sweet. Only one can on the side. The ammunition goes very quickly. You're not really going to be doing too much uh, defense with that. And you don't get any uh, turrets either, so you can't really defend yourself against fighter f fighters for too long. But at least with the flares, you can do some decent things. Decent things. Okay, moving on to the next plane that we have, which is going to be the MiG-23. The first 11.0 jet in the game. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome the MiG-23. This is going to be Russia's new top tier jet. Sweat wings, swinging wings. And it looks a bit interesting. A few people confuse it with the F-111 in the trailer. Yeah, I guess I can see that a bit, yeah. It looks a bit like the F-111, to be fair. I have yeah. to admit that. So, this is the MiG-23, the new top tier jet um, for the Russians, MiG-23M. It gets some new missiles, which I'm going to show you in a second. 
and all the stats and all the good stuff. And I have to show you the swinging wings because this can do some extreme angle. Extreme it angle. transforms it immediately. Okay, sure, so sure, let sure. me show you some of the um, ordinance options first. Modifications, of course, you have quite a few options over here. You can actually unlock the K-23 missiles, which are big air-to-ground missiles, mm. which are laser-guided, but they are essentially mouse-guided in this game, so they're like ATGMs on tanks, meaning that you do have to keep your mouse on target to hit it. It's not like the AS-20 Nords, which you can just fire and forget, essentially. Uh, these you do have to keep your, target, your nose pointed towards the target. But you might notice some new missiles here. Mm. R-23s. Hmm. 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 And holy crap, that is a lot of ordnance options. That is a lot. <laughs> okay, so the R twenty three. You can also take up to six, up to six R sixes if you want to, which is going to be one of the most popular load options there. You have the R twenty threes, and you have two different versions of them. The R twenty three R, which is what I'm going to start with, which is a radar missile. Think of it kind of like an AIM seven, but perhaps not quite. It's it's different, I have to say. Yeah. Well, we're going to do a little quick uh, test launch in a second, but. Not going to guarantee that you're going to work properly. However, look at the mass equivalent. 20.8 kilograms of TNT. If this hits, this is going to kill anything. Indeed. It's a, a big old missile with a uh, long range as well, which is quite nice. But you have a secondary version as well, the R23T. Do we, do we reveal it? Do we do it? You may notice this thing is um, battle rating 11.0. So, new top cap in battle ratings for jets. You may notice this tier 7 as well. This is also going to be the first aircraft with all aspect missiles. Yes, it is. Before you go crazy, <laughs> 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 these are not very good um, all aspect missiles. They have a very limited range in uh, frontal aspect, as you can see in the stats, only 1.3 kilometers. I mean, at that point, you're basically shotgunning them anyway. Yeah. So you're not going to get like long range frontal missile launches, and these don't pull very many Gs either, so you're not really going to be having too much luck yep. in head-ons. However, since they are IR missiles in frontal aspect, you can actually use them at low altitude without having to rely on a radar lock and getting defeated by the radar cluster, essentially, which uh, does give that a, a use in that sense. And uh, I'm, not gonna I'm going to use the radar missile. And as you can see, they are quite big. These are the big ones. So you have the R-60s down below, which are very powerful missiles, high G, very good at close ranges, and then you have these big boys. Very large. Yeah. Okay, let's take it out in the quick test drive. It doesn't have any secondary cam, as you can see. Meh. So let's take it out. Cannon again, not the best. It's only 23 millimeter. Not yeah. going to get too many gun kills with it, but it'll be fine. The lead is quite difficult on that one, especially, yeah. Uh, however, it is oh. a very advanced radar. That it do. Which means this actually gets a uh, lead sight for the gun, if you have a radar lock on your target. Very nice. Which is quite interesting. Okay, so, comes to those sweeping wings, essentially what it allows you to do is have a bit more lift at the lower speeds to give you a bit more maneuverability and lower takeoff speeds. And as the speed increases, the wing is automatically going to adjust its angle. And especially once we reach the uh, threshold for supersonic, it is going to completely go back and look actually absolutely amazing. I love how this thing looks. Yeah. Now, this in comparison to the MiG-21 is not going to be nearly as maneuverable. The MiG-23 was very much an interceptor. It is not designed for close range brawling dogfights. It's not going to be the best uh, turn fighter out there, really. As you can see, the wing area is not quite as good as the MiG-21. It's not quite a delta wing. Um, but what, gives this thing, what this thing can do is go quite fast at high altitudes. This should be faster than the MiG-21, in the, at least in terms of top speed. There you go, wing sweep is now completely oh man, back. Cool it looks... It does. It looks so good. It does, yeah, it's just cool looking. Like on a simple level, it looks cool. It generally looks amazing. Okay. I actually need to, need to do an arcade no mode because of the radar missile, so give me just a second reel. Second here real quick to restart. I forgot to do this. There we go. There we go. And we're gonna try out the new uh, R23T radar missiles. I'm switching to arcade mode, by the way, for one simple reason. In arcade mode, there is no grunt clutter uh, for the radar, so it's a bit easier to get a radar lock with them. Makes sense. Makes sense. Oh, let's try this again. I guess you can just see the wing the wing sweeping again, which is nice. Yes. Uh, the air brakes are very similar to the ones on the SU-7, actually. Those four air brakes in the back, yeah. right by the engine nozzle, which is quite nice. Pretty cool. Okay. We are up in the air. I'm gonna try and get some altitude, see a bit of a uh, test of the climbing capabilities as well. 
Of course, in arcade mode, you don't have a constant afterburner. Yeah. Now, where is the second target? I mean, I guess I can might do a low altitude launch as well. I just want to make the missiles actually hit the first time because these are not a very maneuverable as the issue, really. Yeah. Uh, like also, it. one thing. Even though they have a quite high missile launch range, it's a bit misleading. Um, they are big missiles, but they don't have too much of a burning time. Which means that you have the initial burn in, which most missiles do, they have the initial bur burn, and then they just glide towards the target. These have a quite short burn, so they don't burn for the entire flight duration, which means that uh, your range very much limits is limited by the speed of your aircraft, because your missile will retain the speed of the aircraft, and as well as the altitude. If you're firing on a target that's above you, you're going to have a much shorter range than if you fire the target that's below you. And at high altitudes also, you have a much thinner air, so there's less air resistance uh, to slow down the missile. And of course, if the enemy maneuvers and the missile tries to correct for that, it is also going to lose some speed. So, let's see if we can go uh, towards the target here. I want to kind of see if I can do a rear launch though, because I'm not sure if, it will be, if we will be able to hit it from the front. Need to get a bit closer for the radar to work. There we go. Going to start the radar lock. As you can see, you can actually launch it a bit in front of you if you want to. But we're going to see if we can go a bit closer here. There's yeah. a hefty circle there. It's quite a big circle, actually, yeah. Mm. Peak so, observation, too. If you have never seen radar missiles before, you do need a radar lock before launching them. That is the one requirement of them. Uh, which also means you can actually fire them if the enemy is coming towards you. And there we go, let's see. Now, much like the AIM-7, it takes a about two kilometers to actually start. So that was actually a bot launch. Uh, you need to give yourself a bit of space for the missile to be able to start tracking. Because essentially what it does is for two kilometers, it doesn't track at all. Because it, it's trying to get away from the noise that your own aircraft radar is creating, right? So let's see if we can do this again with a little bit more distance here. You've got this. That's good. I can do it. You can do it, I believe. I can do it. Interesting. Okay, so when the wings are swept, you don't get the uh, flaps, much like, like in the SU-17, actually. Hmm. Interesting one. Okay. Sense. Now, let's see if we can get the radar lock again. I can. Very good. I'm going to try eight clumps this time, just in case. Okay. Or maybe six. Six is good, I think. Yeah, go on then. Give it a go. The only annoying thing is that the bots are constantly going in a circle, which uh, kind of ruins my plan of getting a proper approach here. Hmm. So let's see if we can do a bit of compensation for that. And uh, do we have more planes to show? Yeah, we have still two more planes to show. And then we're going to move on to... Actually, no, we have more planes to show. Yeah. We are maybe going to purposely hold off on a certain tech tree with a certain plane that people have been asking for for a long while, which starts with F. It has two characters after that. And there's been a movie. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Please. Okay, missile out. Let's see if it tracks this time. There we go. Mm. Missile is flying. Are we going to hit the target though? It doesn't pull too well, is the issue. And there we go. Yeah, All right. Very nice. Very nice indeed. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I think your R6 is also going to be more useful in this case uh, because they are much more versatile in close ranges. But you can use these radar missiles for long range engagement, especially in a head on. And you have the other ones as well if you want to go into head on a bit uh, more close range. The other ones, the R23 with the IR missile, with the IR, IR tracker, should not have the issue of. Uh, not guarding for two kilometers since they are IR, they don't have that issue with the radar noise. Okay, finally, in the uh, Russian tech, we're just going to quickly go over this. This is the SU 7 BKM, the new premium uh, attacker for the uh, Russian 3 9.3. It has all the same ordnance that you can expect from the SU 7, it's quite similar to the BKL. Six S 24s, which are quite good, and you do get the ground um, ballistic computer with this, which is quite nice as well. But what I actually like the most is the amount of camos this has. I know. We're so simple with camos. But it so just... you have the pre-order camo, which is an Indian Air Force camo, which, make, which makes this thing look like a duck. Yes. Your standard camo is an Egyptian, ca uh, is an Egyptian camo. This is Actually, this might be the first Egyptian aircraft in the game. I think so. I can't remember another one. I both remember another Egyptian aircraft and not at the same time. It's yeah. a bit weird. I think anyway. maybe there was a World War mode that had the flag, maybe. I don't maybe. Remember. Maybe. Yeah. So yeah, those are the two Egyptian camos. You also have a uh, Indian camo, tricolor. I like that. So this is basically the pre-order camo without the duck, without the duck face. Mm -hmm. uh, like so. You have a Russian camo here as well, which looks quite nice. And you have your standard just metal. 
Yep. Bare metal. If you want to go on the ground. Indeed. There you go. Now we have something. One one last plane to show before we go to the to the ship. So we have one last plane to show here. Which you might have seen in the thumbnail, which was not shown in the RU stream, actually. This one is a bit different. Yeah. So in the last update, we introduced a uh, event vehicle. That we did. For the German air tree. The F4 Phantom. The F4F, early. Well, it is time we move on to a tech tree variant of that. Yep. Very nice. <laughs> Ladies well. and gentlemen, welcome the F4F tech tree version in the German Air Force. Right after the F104G, compensating nicely with the MiG-29 over here. And this one has some uh, special things. This is not the ICE variant, so this is not the most insane variant with AMRAMs or anything like that. No, this is a bit more grounded. But you might notice some interesting missiles here. This one gets AGM-65Bs, not A's. So these are a bit more advanced than the A7Ds missiles, which um, these have a, essentially a better TV tracker. These have a better optical tracker and uh, zoom on the targeting as well, which I'm going to show you in a second as well. And uh, I'm going to show you the modifications. This also has flares. Pretty cool. Flares on a phantom. Very nice. Okay. You can see the ordnance options as well, which are absolutely insane. Immense, immense <laughs> options there. Now, one thing to note here, this does not get the AIM-7s. You don't get any radar missile with this one, at least not right now. Keep in mind, work in progress. Uh, but you do get the AIM-9Js, which are quite nice. And a lot of bombs. A lot of bombs. And a lot of Zunis. A lot of Zunis. And gun pods. And gun pods. And AGM 65Bs. And that as well. Very nice. Very nice. Okay, next up we have a new map that we're going to show, mm -hmm. which is going to be the new naval map. Uh, I'm actually going to quickly create a custom battle again. Okay. And I'll do it the same time as last, uh, last, last time around. I'm going to bring out my Harrier. And Tom is going to bring a new boat, actually. Yeah, sort hmm. of. It's been in the game for many a year, but. Um, wasn't active as it was, um, you know, sort of a trial period to test how the mechanic worked, but now it's, uh, well, will be available pretty soon. So, very, very nice. Okay. You can give it a whirl. So, yeah, this is actually not the new boat, technically, is it? Yeah, it's like, I want to say it's like two, three years old, maybe. Can't really remember. Long time. Quite old. Yeah. You're going to see in a second. Maybe, not, don't mention it. Let's see if the chat can guess it because we're going to go, going to go back to it in a second as well. Yeah, okay. Very okay. Well. So this is the new map, Drowned City. You can see the map layout over here if you want to take a screenshot. And this is going to be the new naval map specifically for low-tier vehicles. So you can see I have my boy... Oh, I didn't talk about this yet, have I? No. Oh, well. I have my yeah. battleship over here, which I can't actually spawn on this map. <laughs> for one very simple reason. There's not enough space. No space. There's not enough space. No space. It's a bit of an issue. A little bit. Very, very, very shallow waters. Yeah, I haven't actually seen this map yet. Have you not? Really? No. no. Very cool. Reminds me of that one movie that no one saw. I can't remember what movie I'm thinking of. But I like Independence this. Independence Day? No, no, it's like another one with like green everywhere. 2012? No. Oh, God, don't remind me. Terrible. But visually, this is very nice. So basically, something really bad happened here. You probably had a massive tsunami just sinking the entirety of this city. All the infrastructure is gone. There's a cargo ship stuck on that bridge with... Uh, <laughs> Oh, I'm actually about to crash. Did that? Okay, I'm good. I'm good. There's a cargo ship stuck on the intersection there. Cargo spilled everywhere. A few islands still have uh, dry ground and all the good stuff. But uh, yeah, this is quite an interesting map because it allows you to take a lot of sneaky cover with those small boats. Yeah, pretty much. And especially in this boat that you have, which has yes. a lot of weird round objects in the back. What could what could those be? Be. What so, could they be? What are they, Tom? They are mines. Very nice mines as well, which are pretty much instrumental on a map like this because there's lots of very narrow channels. So you can very much quite aptly uh, block them off with these mines, which is pretty nice. And I'm just noticing as well, you can kind of see the, the roads underneath the water from your yeah. viewpoint. That's yeah, really cool, actually. I like that. So you saw it in the trailer. It's actually a bit of a... The, the underground, the underwater line is actually modeled. Like there's the full city underneath the water. You just oh. can't really see it, but it does affect your ships, which is why you can't bring big ships onto this map because they simply wouldn't be able to swim. They would just get stuck yeah. on the ground. Hi, Tom. Hello. That is a nice ship, I have to say. From the, from the upside, it looks it's really nice. It's really pretty, actually. Yeah, very long. A long boy. And it's a hydrofoil as well. Yep. Goes quite well. Very similar to the uh, VS-10, I believe it's called. Uh, quite similar in that regard. Yeah, you can cool. see the Everstock didn't quite make it over there. 
<laughs> we are in a bit of an alternate timeline here. Um, with the Harrys, you can actually on, land on top of the uh, buildings if you want to. This is an interesting map for aircraft as well. Yeah, pretty much. Keep in mind, since this is very much limited to low-tier boats, and if aircraft can spawn in this, which I believe they should be able to, you can do some interesting stuff with um, cats as well. Yeah. Take cover behind the skyscrapers, take cover behind low buildings, and do some strafing runs. And this, I believe, is a new boat model. I don't think I've seen this I one before. I haven't seen that either, actually. That's quite cool. That's a very interesting yeah. one. So many new things. So Look many new all. things. We're not going to go to do a full exploration of this map. You will have to do it yourself when it's time for the Death Star. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's move on to the next option. We are going to now switch over to... Oh. We still have one nation to show with aircraft, right? Okay. But we are going to bait you. Oh. We are going to show the last nation with aircraft, America. But we're going to do it after the boats. <laughs> after the boats, of which we have some. And I don't really know about many of them, but I can sort of show you uh, their overall sort of the gist of them. The armor values as well. So this is the Wyoming, uh, America's second uh, dreadnought, which is pretty nice. Uh, extra gun, so extra set of guns. So I believe this is 12 instead of 10. So a little bit better there. Armor as well, a little bit different. So there are changes. Uh, I don't really know the particulars of a lot of these ships. Um, because I haven't really had much time to kind of go into any of them. But visually, again, as always, the model is very, very nice. Giant clock as well. Always nice for these ships. My favorite aspect. And yeah, pretty nice. And uh, there are a couple of things we can have a look at in the uh, the test here, the test sail. Those are some big guns. Big guns. The armor is actually pretty interesting as well. I've seen it in the um, in the armor analyzer. It has some coal, bu coal bunkers, which act as extra armor. Yeah. yeah. And some turtle back internal armor plates mm -hmm. as well. Pretty good. So while these guns are very Ooh, slowly... These are very slow very slowly moving over. There are a couple of uh, additional features that we can briefly show. And the first one is, uh, well, I will sort of let it speak for itself. Bloop. Look oh, at this. Oh yeah, a new camera for uh, naval shells. Look at this, dude. Little sounds as well, like the whistling. How cool is that? It's going to miss now, isn't it? I hope not. Oh, that sounds. It's really cool. Look at that. Oh. And as well, one thing that I'm uh, very happy about is uh, previously, well, quite realistically, shells at range were very hard to see once you fired. But if we fire these now, we can see that even as they go farther and farther off into the distance, the tail of the tracer remains visible. So you have that visual feedback of where your shells are landing. Because before, they turned almost invisible with the range, which, you know, you wouldn't be able to see at that range anyway. But they are, you know added back effectively from this uh, this view, which is great because it means you can now see exactly where you're aiming. It's a bit more sort of responsive in terms of the visual feedback you get, which is very, very nice. I'm very glad. Do you mean I can actually start hitting targets now? You can give it your best shot. I'm terrible at naval. I'm really happy for the shell uh, for the shells visual, the fell, shell following camera, though. That's really nice, right? I like it. It's Especially when you see, like, the entire salvo shells all around you. Yeah, it's like, it's, it's kind of functional and it's visually, like, appealing to watch as well. It's like, doubles up. It's great. We also have the USS Candid. Um, sneaky in here. It's a. Uh, it's not really a ship you'd sort of you know know about. I suppose it doesn't look particularly imposing, but it's a nice little ship to have in rank four, um, with the uh, seventy six on the front there and the two Bofors on the back, which is pretty nice. I mean, Bofors in naval, especially like the coastal ships, are incredibly powerful. Um, with the HE, they do really really well. This ship is a bit like a sort of toned down um, LS class, I suppose. Very slow. Not really very well protected, but if you can get those bofers on target, it does do pretty well. It looks very chubby, I have to say. It is a bit of a chubby boy. Yeah. Hmm. It's very Curious. sweet. I like it. I like these sort of ships that aren't really like a designed uh, intrinsically to be, you know, against other ships in combat. So it's it's nice. It's nice to see the um, designs like this. They're just I don't know, nice to me. I like it. Can you show off the uh, German boat you were just playing as well? I can. This is the VS8. Schnell. Boot. Schnell boot. What's this word? Say it in German. Wait, no, that's shell. Yeah. Wait, <laughs> did, you say, did you say it was schnell the whole time? Yes! <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> Actu I thought it was schnell. Actual blindness. What does this mean? Uh, well, shell. Sh I actually, I, I don't quite know. It, it's not quite mine. Okay. I guess it's supposed to be, to be referencing mine, but it's not quite mine. Okay, well, in any case. This is um, the VS-8. This was uh, in the game for a very long time, for a brief test a long time ago to test how the mines worked. Uh, and now it's finally back as a premium. So this is quite uh, similar to the VS-10, I want to say it is, the other hydrofoil, with these 15mm turrets all over the top. But this one is much longer and has the mines as well. 
It's uh, from what I remember, not the most survivable ship. It's uh, it's quite long. It's very very easy to hit. It doesn't and, have um, much crew. Yeah, not a lot of crew, and the dead zones of these guns can get in the way a lot. But as a ship, it's pretty cool. I know visually it just it works for me. I like the kind of um, the cabin here as well. It just reminds me of like the catamarans you'd go on to go to France. Yeah, it's just sure. nice. It looks yeah. like you, took, you could take a nice uh, luxurious cruise in it. Yeah, sort of get rid of the mines in the back. Just put like, some some some, some, some shares in there. Some decking down. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Absolutely perfect. Yeah, very nice ship. I have to see how this plays, especially on the new map as well for the mines. Uh, okay, we next have a Russian boat as well, which is going to be quite uh, similar to regards. This is the Project 30 BIS, which can also carry some naval mines and torpedoes and death charges if you want to. Yeah, it's it's a bit like a scaled up version of the Ognavoy that comes before it. Um, it gets uh, extra torpedoes and a slightly improved um, anti-air or secondary mount as well. So... And interesting, yeah. the guns are the same ones as found on the SU-100Y, I believe. I think so, yeah, functionally done, the same, yeah. Yeah, done 30mm cannons, which yeah. are quite good in tanks. They're probably not going to be the most powerful in ships, given that you only have uh, four of them in total as well. But the capability of launching the mines should be quite interesting to all the players out there. I'm going also going to show you the modifications just in case. You can see you have some HE, you have HEVT even, interesting. For the 130mm cannons mm -hmm. and the 85mm secondaries. Pretty nifty. But not smart in terms of armor at all. This is not a very survival ship in that regard. Indeed. Although you do have a, quite a bit of crew here, which is not bad yeah, at yeah. all. It's, it's actually not... It's one of the better sort of early destroyers in my experience. I quite like it. Oh, that's an interesting one. Is that a new squadron vehicle I see? It could perhaps be. Oh my god. Yeah, again, I don't know too much about these ships, of course, but uh, this is the Liverpool cruiser. Um, very similar to the Belfast and the Southampton, although with some differences. The main difference with this ship, putting it at 5.3, is the lack of an extra turret. This only has three of the turrets instead of four like the others, but it does have more anti-air uh, cover protection, which is pretty nice. So, yeah, I can't really speak about it too much in terms of what it can do. You can see the Belfast there in the background. Um, very, very similar visually, uh, but with some of the differences as well. Uh, I'm going to have a quick look at the armor here. I don't know it changes too much between the ships. Um, yeah, pretty, pretty similar. And we can see the statistics here as well. We also have uh, the Leopard Frigate here, which, um, I don't know, I've always liked the green kind of toning on the top of these ships. That does look nice. It reminds me of, like, some destroyers, like, just museum ships I went on as a kid. I quite, kind of like those. So, yeah, this is very similar to the Whitby, I believe, um, with the uh, gun mounts here as well. It has the same, but this has uh, two of them, which is, um, it's not the most powerful uh, gun mounts, but these do fire very, very quickly. I believe we can see that on here as well, so 20 rounds a minute. That's very quick. First stage, yes, they are pretty, pretty good at that. Uh, and with the stag mounts as well. So it's yeah, it's pretty decent for a frigate. I haven't really played these very much. They're kind of hard to get at the end of the line, but they are very, very effective in their element. So yeah, pretty nice ship, very visually interesting as well. I like all these kind of late uh, British designs, so it's pretty nice to see this one. And um, we did save the best ship for last though. We did. The Italian players, naval players out there have been asking for this for a long time. Well, you are going to get it now. Look Italy is finally going to get a battleship. Look at it. It looks very menacing. I love all the little um, 76s on the top of the main turret as well. That has to be the worst the worst job Dude, out there. It's like when I used to like <laughs> kind of draw stuff like this as a kid and like you'd add guns on top of guns. It was like this. This is what I drew. So I love these as well. Like a little rounded uh, one on top of here. Like, oh, yeah. That's it looks a bit like the World War One, like... Um, uh, what's called mountain defense guns. I know what you mean, yeah, like I think Battlefield have those. Yeah, yeah so that's pretty cool. Yeah, a very nice ship, very uh, visually interesting as well. I can take a quick look at the armor values here as well. If we take off the external, we can see the armor inside. You have some turtle back, you have the coal bunkers on the outside. This is quite a well-armored ship. Quite a well-armored ship. And decent uh, performance of the guns as well. Of the SAP standard with 31 kilograms of explosive filler. Very, very nice and the APCBC as well. A bit more penetration, takes a pretty big hit in filler, but, you know, pretty good. Nice versatility, it's good that it has both. A uh, pretty nice ship. I can't really say much apart from how visually interesting it looks, of which is very nice. Would you say the anti-aircraft armament is anything decent? I don't seem to see too much great there, really. Yeah, like a lot of them, because, I mean, these are sort of designed at a time when, you know, aircraft weren't really that imposing. Yeah, true, true, true. So, you know, these guns are really all they... I guess, needed to have in terms of, like, um, you know, at the time. So, yeah, they're not really great against aircraft right now, but against other ships, very, very powerful. Very powerful. I see what you're doing. 
I know I, what you're doing. <laughs> I, I'm not. I, I, I might get sacked for this. I might get sacked for this. Yes. There is something... Now that is just inappropriate. Yes, oh, it is actually very inappropriate. We can't show that in any case. Okay. Don't okay. do it. Don't do it. Do we do it? Don't do it. Do we do it? We can't show that. We have to do it, Tom. We can't. For the people. For the people. For the people. Yeah. You may have noticed we completely skipped over the American air tree. Yep. We did. Why did we do that? We saved something for last. Yep. Okay. Hold on to your chairs. Are you sitting comfortably? Um, make sure you don't have any drinks in your mouth so you don't spit it out. Make sure you don't have any drinks in your hands so you don't spill it over the keyboard. Make sure you're, you're sitting down nice, nicely, okay? What I'm about to show you is a vehicle, a plane specifically, that has been asked for for a, a very long time. It starts with an F. It has two characters after that. It you know is a, a movie star. You know what And doing. it has, holy crap, does have... Have you seen the amount of ordnance this thing can carry? It's uh, well, it is insane. It yeah. is actually insane. I can't deny that. Oh, and it is supersonic. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the game. D F five E. I'm gonna have an aneurysm. I can't believe this. <laughs> you can't do this. <laughs> it's like the worst thing in the world. So many people are like, they're gonna do it. They're gonna do it. They saved it till last. It's gonna be amazing. And now you can't really sell it as much. No, because this actually is genuinely amazing. It is amazing. Though, the FIV is actually genuinely amazing, and you're going to understand why. So <laughs> You've japed thousands of people. The I, I can jape. just imagine the chat right now. It's going to be absolutely insane. I can't believe this. So <laughs> this is the new American Top Tier Jet, rank 7. And you may notice that the F5 isn't really a new plane in the game. We did have the F5A in the Chinese air tree in the last patch, but this one is so much better. You may notice a rather big looking thing scraping along the ground, which is kind of inappropriate. This is the same gun pod as you can find on the A7D. Yes, indeed. This is a GAU-13, which is basically a cut-down version of the A10's main gun, the GAU-8. Mm -hmm. Yeah, on a fighter of this size. The gun, is, the gun pod is almost as big as the fighter itself. That is just immense. Look at that. And this is not the only ordnance option. So. No. The F5E essentially what it brings to the table is some um, actually very, very decently upgraded power. I can show you the power of the engines in comparison to the F5C, we have the premium aircraft. 2,220 kilograms of force in uh, afterburner mode, which is really quite powerful, especially compared to the only 1,430 that you get with this wing. So the F5E actually has as much more thrust without afterburner as the F5C does with. Curious. What this allows you to do is, one, even better acceleration, if that was even possible. Um, this can now actually go supersonic at sea level, if you don't have your ordnance options out. And it allows you to carry a, a lot more ordnance. You have a bit of a different wing design as well, which looks quite nice. I don't, I'm not a particular fan of the camo of this one. I, I think I'm definitely going to go for one of those MiG-28 user custom skins, yeah, yeah. which are going mm -hmm. to be looking better, but... Let me show you the amount of ordnance this thing can carry, because holy crap. Look at this boy. You can see the entire modification screen is just modification after modification after modification. It's Half of it is just uh, ordnance. You may notice, this one gets flares. This is the one thing that I've always really found the most um, detrimental to the F5A, uh -huh. is the lack of countermeasures. Mm -hmm. It made it so that once you had a very capable plane in the right hands, a very maneuverable plane, it couldn't really do much once someone got their missiles on you. You couldn't really evade them, and you didn't have flares to defeat them. Now you do. You have flares, you have chaff, all the good stuff. <laughs> you have this gun pod if you want to, which does have very good ground penetration, so if you want to go cast with the gun pod, you can do that. Yeah. And let me show you. <laughs> let me show you the secondary loadout, because... Yeah. That's a whole sea of loadouts there. Yeah, it's, it very much is. It very much is. Very much is. Okay. Uh, I sound a bit like Sean Connery there. He did a bit, a yeah. That's exactly what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it still only has AIM-9Js. You don't get any upgraded missiles beyond that. And you are still limited to only two. You cannot carry four missiles on this plane. However, you have some new options. As I mentioned before, you have the gun pod, which you can actually find in some other load options as well. If you want to carry the gun pod and the missile together, you can. This looks even sillier. And you might have noticed a little something here. Huh. Curious. Curious. So you may notice, you may know the AGM-65 uh, Ace from the A7D. The AGM-65 Ace are self-guiding 
uh, air-to-ground missiles. They are designed to go against uh, tanks and stationary objects. And they can guide themselves. They're essentially firing for a get. You lock onto a target, the missile falls by itself. You don't have to do any input after you launch the uh, missile. However, the one major drawback that the ones on the A7D had is that the, um, the targeting camera wasn't the best. Uh, it didn't have zoom, so you couldn't really spot targets at long ranges. And it was just generally a bit hard to, to deal with. These, however, are, are upgraded. So whilst the missile body itself is still the same, still has the same characteristics, still has the same penetration, still has the same explosive power, these ones get a, a better uh, camera, which I'm going to show you in a test flight real quick. Give it a go. And you can see a bit of the performance as well. This honestly performs amazingly well. I, I love the way this thing performs. This is... I have a feeling this is probably going to be one of the most versatile planes out there. I mean, you have great performance on the plane itself. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely tiny. Small. It has the 20 million cannon, which is actually still a decent amount of, uh, of um, ammo. Yep. And I actually need to show it red on a bit as well, because that's even going to make it better. This honestly is going to be the meta. I, I genuinely believe this is going to be the, the new meta. The meta. He's called it. It's going to be the, the meta. The absolute meta. Okay. So switching over to the AGM-65 sites. This is what you can see. This is not thermal side, by the way. It doesn't give you a thermal signature. It's just black and white. But you can zoom in. Oh. Which makes it a lot easier to spot targets at range. And I'm going to see if I can do a little strafing run on the SPAA. I think this looks funny with all those straps at the bottom it does. of the window. Yeah. It does. Let's see if I can get a lock. There we go. So yeah, we got a lock. We can fire off a missile. And that's all we need to do. The missile will guide itself towards the target. Mavericks are quite nice. I do like them. Yes. So you can use them in third person, you can use them in, fir in first person if you want to. But what I clearly want to do actually is do another round with the Gao, because it just looks absolutely amazing. Yes, take off with it, go. <laughs> I don't know how to take... I'm, I'm generally not sure if that's supposed to be that way, because it, it just looks silly. It just it looks silly, it just feels silly. It, it scrapes on the ground. How does it work? I don't, well, I, I don't know. I'm actually going to do the little radar trick as well. Okay. So this F5E, apart from all the up other upgrades of a better engine, of uh, more ordnance, of all the good stuff and flares, it also has an upgraded radar, which I'm going to show you in a second. Also, by the way, look at that. What the hell is that? It just looks silly to me. It, I'm half expecting sparks coming out the backside yeah. of that. <laughs> but still, even with that massive gun pod strapped to the, to the underside, it still takes yeah. off very easily. Still responsive, yep. The engines are very, very good. Now, of course, you can notice that my responsiveness, especially low speeds, is now quite bad. But uh, you can still fly around pretty pretty well. Let's get a bit closer to the MiG-15, shall we? Go on, then. Do a little inversion as well. If you want to look like a UFO. It's quite bizarre. <laughs> I can't get over this. It just, it looks like it's too big, but it isn't. It's just like the size of the plane. It's kind of it basically is like... It, Tom actually had this uh, bit of a confusion early. He... Mm, he wasn't sure if the scale was up to scale. Yeah, because it's just, it looks like it should be smaller, but it, it, it isn't. It's just the plane is really small. Also, Tom, do you notice something interesting in the radar? I do. This gets a gun leading radar in RB. Much like the um, T2 used to have back in the day, you can lead your uh, targets with the gun. Of course, I'm terrible actually, actually <laughs> taking part of that, but there you go. Yeah. This is probably the most um, most all-round plane out there. This is the most... It's a workhorse, really. Yeah, it's going to be very, very good. Very, you can very use good. an air-to-air -air combat with the two AIM-9Js. You can use an air-to-ground combat with the GAO and all the ground options in the AGM-65s. And let me see if I can get a little strafe on a tank as well, because I do have the... Um, uh, air-to-ground... the ground target belts loaded, which gives me quite a bit of a penetration. So let's see if we can actually kill a tank in a top-down attack as well. Give it a Do go. a little loop. Drop some flares. Beautiful. Wow. Breathtaking. Da -da. I'm even not going to talk, just listen to the sound. Okay. I can't hear it, but I imagine it's nice. It's a lot of bird. A lot of bird. It's a lot of bird. Too many birds in one place. Way too many say. birds. Too... One bird, two tanks. Don't say that. That was more like the two birds, one stone thing. Yeah. The Bad bird analogy. is the stone. What do you mean? I mean, technically <laughs> just throwing very fast stones. I, I mean, sure. I, I annoyingly cannot dispute that as a, as a term. So there you go. Bullets are just very fast stones. There you go. That may have been the worst thing we've ever said. <laughs> very much so. 
And that is the FIV. I have a feeling I'm going to have a lot of fun with this one. This is yes, going to be absolutely. my new favorite plane. It's just so incredibly versatile. But if you are happen to be far away from unlocking the FIV, given that it's after the F-104 line, don't fret. Because you can also buy the F-5C, which is currently on pre-order. And this one is actually quite amazing because it gets a very special camo from a very special movie, which I sadly don't have a lot on this account, so I yes, can't show you the camo. It, but it is very, very nice, we, we promise. <laughs> I mean, the base camo itself also looks quite nice. Yeah. And um, side difference here, you have two flare launches on the sides instead of just one underneath on the F5E, which uh, should still be here somewhere. It's a bit hidden underneath. Uh, but you can see actually the F5E has less flares than the F5C does, given that you have to double up the launches here. And your ordnance options are very similar to the F5A in the Chinese yeah. tech tree. You don't get aim 9 js in this one, you only get aim 9 es Once again, you can only carry two of them on the wingtips, but you get quite a selection of uh, bombs, of rockets, and even the bullpup missiles. So, no AGM-65, but uh, the bullpups are, in some situations, actually more useful. Yeah, yeah, they are pretty good. You can just use them like a regular dump-fired rocket, but with a lot of boom. So if you carry this one, for example, this is a very good loadout for a uh, Grand Arby. Very good. Four launches, four relatively easy kills. These are quite powerful uh, rockets, missiles. And you can do some good stuff. Some good stuff indeed. Some very good stuff. Okay, we have actually gone over time way. <laughs> We've just been talking too much about each individual vehicle. Honestly, I, I, I am really looking forward to this. And yeah. this isn't even all of it. No, yeah. there is more coming. There is more vehicles coming. This is not what everything that we've shown uh, everything. Well, this is everything that we could show, but not everything that we have to show for the update. Yeah, I suppose so. So I guess we can maybe take a few minutes to answer some questions. If you have some questions, leave them in the chat down below. We have some uh, mods, so we're going to pick out some of the most interesting ones about some of the new vehicles and stuff like that. And uh, then we are going to go and tomorrow. No, wait, no. When? What Soon. day is it? I should not know. What day is it? It's Friday. Oh, okay. I'm wrong. Never mind. <laughs> anyway. Those of you who have been with Waffen for a while may notice that usually these um, dev preview streams uh, precede something. So keep an eye for that. Soon TM. Mm. Very yes. soon TM. Indeed. Mm, yes. Rather soon. Uh, dev server when? Soon TM. <laughs> That's what I should just answer. <laughs> but but fast. Soon TM. We can't give you the exact date because it's not quite set in stone. Keep in mind, the dev server only opens if it's actually ready for the public. Mm -hmm. Right now, there are some issues that, st that still need some ironing out. Now, devs have to work on that. But uh, yeah, very soon, TM, you will be able to test these things out for yourself. Very soon. Uh, Frogs, the rough price on the F5. You can check it out on the website, actually. It's on the website. There's a pre-order up now. I can't quite recall what the price is. But um, if you do pre-order it before the patch launches, you get a special skin for it. The aggressor skin, which is basically the MiG-28 skin from the Top Gun movie. Very and it looks extremely nice. Mm -hmm. Can you show the Russian air tech tree? Yes, I can. Again, for sure. Uh, Tom, did you want to show us? Oh, yeah, you can actually do it. Got open. Yep. There you go. Here it is. Here's the end line. You can see uh, the position of the new stuff. Yak uh, 28 is after T14 and the MiG 23 after the Biz. So that's where all the new stuff lies for now. I'm kind of looking forward to the MiG 23 because it looks very nice, but I'm not sure if it's going to perform very well. Yeah, I don't know if it, it is either, really. Yeah, it's like visually, it's in, like really, really nice. But yeah, it's. I don't know, I think a lot of the other aircraft are still going to have the edge. We'll have to see. I mean, the MiG-21 base is going to be way more maneuverable, that is for sure. The MiG-23 is... It wasn't that maneuverable aircraft in real life either. Hmm. It's its not a dogfighter, that's for sure. Uh, the Dardo as well, I can show you that. After the uh, tow that in tier 6. Anything uh, for Japan other than the things you guys have shown? Maybe. We can't quite tell right now. Essentially, you have the things that we've shown right now, the M47 and the uh, premium P-51C. If there are more things coming, we can't tell. You'll have to wait for the first dev server, or if there is a second dev server, the second dev server. Mm -hmm. uh, does the F4E get Maverick? The F4E, I don't believe, does actually. I can quickly check. I believe the Maverick missile is exclusive to the German one. So yeah, the F4E does not get the, AGM, the uh, AGM-65s. It's only the new German one, the F4F, at the end of the American plane line, essentially, in the German tech tree, that does get the AGM-65s. Although, you can only carry two AGM-65s and not with anything else, so you're very limited in that regard. Indeed. You have to pick and choose what you want to do with it. 
Is the IRST working? I'm not sure right now. The IRST is a mechanic that was on the MiG-23, which essentially allows you to get a longer range lock with your IR missiles. I'm not sure if they're working right now. I can't really answer that properly. Indeed. Uh, hey, Mike, who's your hairdresser? Myself. <laughs> yeah, I know. Here's some more question, guys. In a few minutes, we'll be closing down, and then, well, then you'll just have to wait for the tester and try it out for yourself. Have to wait. Chat is probably going to go insane. I'm very glad we didn't have any frame drops today. Yeah, it was zero. It's been touch and go before. But <sighs> Perfect. Yeah, Thank the you. Lottery. The frame lottery. The internet gods have answered. Hmm. Wonderful. The premium SU7 loadouts, I can show you. Uh, I have them over here. It's pretty much the same as on Tech Tree. It's not really anything special. You don't get any air turn missiles with them. Uh, although I believe this one does get flares, if I'm not mistaken. Let me make sure that I'm saying it correctly. It doesn't actually, never mind. Uh, so it's it's a standard ground attacker essentially. Not really anything too special, but with the premium bonus, you can do some decent um, decent grinding with this. Get some SL, get some RP, all that good stuff. <laughs> Will the R3T20 get afterburners? Little tip. If you point to get the gun uh, backwards, then yes. Make your own, yes. <laughs> uh, Mystic, one for you there. Uh, let's have a look. So binocular view here. Standard still works. So yeah, yeah. that hasn't been taken away with the uh, commander view. You can still aim with the binocular view. Right now you can still range find with the binocular view, but I think that is going to get removed. Uh, what has been removed from, from binocular view is the night sights. Yep. You no longer have night vision, you no, no, no longer have thermal vision in binocular view. You have to use commander sight for that now, but you can still use binoculars to look around and to aim your gun. Yep. Same as before, no difference there. Very much so. Uh, Tyson, I can't quite answer that actually. Oh yeah, by the way, let me show you the tech trees in general, because there are a few of the old planes as well which are getting moved up to um, rank 7. So you have the A7D and the F4E are now both going to be rank 7. In the German tech tree, you're going to have the F4F, the, the MiG-21MF, and the F4 early. I'm actually going to go into red mode, so you guys can see probably. Whoa. Uh, so this is the event plane. This is also going to be rank 7 now. Uh, USSR, you're going to have quite a few, actually, four now. SC-17 is getting moved up. Interesting. And the SMT. Hmm. hmm. Curious. Curious. Curious indeed. Britain doesn't... Oh, no, Britain also has the two Phantoms, the FG-1 and the FGR-2. Japan has the F4EJ. Okay, that's fair. I really like the F4EJ, actually. It's really good. It's, it's got yeah. a beautiful camo. Beautiful. China has the 104G, which is actually fair. This is probably the best F104 uh, out of the bunch because it gets four of the A9Js, which are very good. Just have need the new plan here, which I can show again as well. And the F5A. Italy has no no rank 7 jets yet, okay? France gets the Mirage 3C and the Mirage 3E. And Sweden should get the Draken. There you go. Very nice. Did you have a question there as well? I was said very nice. No, okay. <laughs> uh, China will not get an FE, F5E, at least not this patch. We don't know about the future, but right now, no. I think the FIV was pretty much just an American thing. Is the airfield now ground to air protected? You saw in the trailer. There are Sam's the airfields. We can't really show them here, but keep an eye out for that. And I think that is going to be pretty much it for us. I guess just because it took, it, it's been a while ago, I'm just going to show off the commander sites again, just to give you a, a bit of a tutorial. And after that, we shall get going. Yeah. Can we look at the modifications on the new SPA for Sweden? It's the same as the French one. Can you quickly yep. show it? I can get that up for you. Let's have a nab. There you go. There you go. It gets a V21 missile, the same as the top missile on the Flarakrat, mm -hmm. the big massive anti-air truck that the Germans have, which I guess is fitting because this is also a big massive anti-air truck. Yes. Ugh, it looks so weird. Big massive. Big massive. Okay. Uh, so this is the um, commander site. Again, a quick tutorial. You have some new keybinds that you can set up or rather had to set up in one case. So by default, you have the this option here disabled. So by default, at least right now, by default, you cannot switch to the commander side by pressing through the cycle view button. I can only go gunner or regular view, no commander side. However, you do have the option of doing that. If you really prefer that instead of, instead of having a different keybind for it, you can go into the ground battle options, you can enable this option over here, switching to commander side in loop, and this will enable you to switch to commander side through switching through the cycles. Yes. 
Now, the commander side is a separate side from the gun side. You can see it actually on the uh, PLSS. It should be this thing over here. Uh, I can't extend it right now. It's got a bit of an issue, but uh, it'll be working hopefully in the future. And essentially what this does is it takes some of the functionality of the binoculars and adds some more onto that as well. So first things first, switching over to the commander side, you can move it independently of the turret if you want to. It is limited in speed, so the commander side itself has a turret traverse speed and an elevation speed. It is limited in regard and also has a probably a limitation on how high you can elevate. Yeah. Um, you can zoom in with it, which is an upgrade over the binoculars. It's actually pretty nice. And you can use thermal sights with it. And especially in the case of the SDR V122, um, the commander's of thermal sights are actually high resolution than the main sights. Oh, sorry, my dad in blind. <laughs> yeah. The main gun sights thermals are not that great, but the commander thermals are actually really good. Really, really crisp. Crisp. Now, what you can also do is you can, much like in binoculars, you can hold down your fire button and it will move your turret. However, this isn't really the ideal way of using it because if you do laser range finding, it doesn't actually adjust the gun this way. So you can see right now, it hasn't adjusted the range of the gun. What you need to do for that is you need to bind a new key bind, which is command, commander fire control. This one is probably the most important one. This is the only one you really have to bind. What this allows you to do is when you press it whilst in command of you, you can see on the top left, you have the aim mode enabled. Now, even without holding down the fire button, the gun will follow your commander's sight. What it will also do is, if you do a laser range find, it will automatically adjust the range of the gun. This wasn't me, this was the gun itself adjusting for the range that it the laser him. range found out, gave out. And now, if you press the fire button, it actually fires the gun whilst you are still in command of you. Very cool. So this is quite useful for firing through bushes and stuff like that. And really it nice. does actually just with HE as well. So if I want to lob HE at this uh, target at long range. Let's see if I can actually do it on the first hit. Can he do it? Can he do hey, it? Hey, there we go. He can indeed. Look it that. automated just for the velocity of your shell. Nice. Very useful. Very useful. Very useful. Uh, does the British Phantom get any new missiles? I don't believe it does. I don't believe it does. Okay. So, yeah, that's going to be it for today. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Michael Zboom. I've been joined by the lovely Tom, aka Oxy. You should be able to watch the VOD of this afterwards as well. Usually these dev streams will stay up on YouTube so you can rewatch them and get all the good info out of them. And we will see you on a dev server soon, TM. Mm -hmm. Thank you for watching the stream. Stay tuned for more updates and the news on the upcoming patch. Keep in mind that everything we showed today is a work in progress and not final. And there are still more things to come that we haven't shown yet. You'll have to, to, yeah, you'll have to figure it out by yourself. Yes. Anyway, any last words, Tom? Uh, no, I don't think so. Thank you very much for watching. We have been the War on the Fisher channel, and we shall see you next week. Yes, we shall. Good. Bye. Bye.